Hello. So today I'm going to look into taking apart some capacitors. Um, this one's really old. Came out of a ghetto blaster. 25 volt, 220, or sorry, 2200 microfarad. And then this one isn't as old, but you can see that it's slightly bulged at the top. Just a little tiny bit. Nice name brand. And then there's a small one that was used part of the audio circuit for the same ghetto blaster. So this one's very old. This one's not so old. This one's probably from mm, the late 90s. And then this one came out of this ghetto blaster here. So just a few sizes. Just going to take a look to see what's inside them. Uh, so you got to wear the, pla the rubber gloves because there's electrolytic fluid inside these, so you have to be very careful. And I'm just going to start by peeling back. The bottom <clears throat> is kind of like a retaining fold. Holds everything in. Let me just zoom in just a little bit for you. There you go. So now that I've gotten that far, I can start doing this. It's kind of like peeling an orange. There we go. So you can see that the outer wrapper that has all the writing on it is just part of a plastic cover. And look at that. Can you see some debris? go and then there's the inside of the cap so this little rubber piece will just come off usually does there it is slips off there you go and there are your terminals. Now I should be able to, if I can find the end of the tape. So the inside of the capacitor has the, the paper that has the electrolytic fluid into it, impregnated in it. And then it's gonna have the foil wrapper so this is actually, this is damp to the touch. Sticky tape. And there's the foil. Huh. You usually would unwind nicely, but I think this one, because it was kind of damaged, Here we go. Let's... Wow, this one's really. It's not the first time I've taken one of these apart, but this one's really. Um, it's it's baked onto the the foil, the paper. So I wonder if that's part of it failing. Might very well be. And there you go. When we get further down the line, now you can see the foil. And there's the two connecting probes. There you go. It's still sticking. So that might be part of the reason why I failed, or how they fail, is uh, the electrolytic kind of gets, the paper gets kind of 
baked onto the foil. Maybe that's what happens when they overheat. So this is aluminum foil covered with aluminum oxide, which is of course dielectric. It's kind of riveted on there. And it's all good up until this point here and it just sticks to the paper. When I took apart last night, it um, it all came out in separate pieces. So, so that's that one. Let's just get rid of that. Now we're gonna look into this one that's really old. It's a Rubicon. So let's take a look at this and see what it has. I just want to see if the age of these things plays a part and how it looks on the inside, if it'll be anywhere dry like that paper in the last one it was actually damp to the touch this one being much older now I measured the cap and this one here and it was still within spec despite its age gonna come free there we go same thing looks pretty much the same same idea this one I don't really feel but look at that you see that look, I'm gonna squeeze it and look on my fingers still wet that's incredible used a different tape with this one now this one was still good it wasn't bulging it wasn't showing any signs of distress like the other one I forgot to oops wow it's actually this one's a lot more juicier than the other one was this one's actually wet the other one was just damp let's see if we can And there it is, there's the beginning of it. Yeah, this one's gonna be a little bit better, I think. This one's stuck because of the paper there. We've gone down to the next layer. So let's just kind of unstick this. I'm gonna try to get this all off on one nice big layer here. There we go. And we unroll it. So now you can clearly see the two layers and how they're sandwiched together. A very long strip, that's about a foot and a half. And you can see the two connecting terminals. And then let me just kind of separate this along here. So this paper, very wet. And then the dielectric, which of course is a foil. You can see one is connected to the paper, the terminals, and the dielectric. And then the other one is connected to the dielectric, the uh, foil itself. Now that's interesting because the other capacitor that I took apart, it was just 
connected to the paper. It wasn't connected to. Or maybe it was and I just didn't see it. Oh well. But that's that one. I think it's going to be a new series, kind of doing a what's inside electronic components. Electronic components, but I see what's inside of one. I'll just kind of take it apart. Hi, right, kitty. So this one is very, very small. My hands are wet because that's stupid stuff. So this one is going to be tricky to do. tougher to get out but there it is so I think same idea just on a different smaller scale it, I've kind of ripped out one of the leads there Let's see if I can kind of find the edge of the foil here don't see Definitely harder to do. Uh, yeah. There we go. Now you can see the foil coming out. Again. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of wetness there. So after all these years, this is out of a ghetto blaster that's probably, uh, well, late 80s, early 90s, probably more late 80s. And it's still damp after all that time. So the lifespan of these are actually pretty good when they're in the right condition and right environment. But that is it. That's what's inside a capacitor. Again, you've got the the paper and then the foil that's covered with the uh, the aluminum oxide with dielectric which creates dielectric rather and then the leads and that's the inside of a capacitor I think uh, next time I'll try to do something like this it's a MOSFET figure out how to crack one of those open so I could see the inside of it perfectly but yeah that's it Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.